A central task for politics in the coming years is to show how we can build a good society in tough times. We will not be able to spend our way to a better Britain, but this fiscal position shouldn't constrain our ambitions. Britain is not broken. Crime and drug use are falling. We are healthier and better educated than ever before. Britain is full of resilient, creative people. But we need to create a more equal society. Equality is not just about income and wealth, however. It's about social equality, how we relate to each other as free and equal citizens. And this cannot be handed down from above. It depends on the active, democratic engagement of people themselves. So the first pillar of a strong society must be a radical decentralisation of power. Central government will always have a vital role to play, but it must pass more power down to our cities and counties, as well as to the users of public services themselves. The second pillar of a strong society is contribution and shared endeavour. We must aim to rebuild reciprocity and renew the contributory principle in our welfare state. Finally, we must strengthen the shared institutions on which a good society depends. Social reforms that are embodied in institutions are durable, whether it's the NHS, children's centres or neighbourhood networks for older people. So what policy proposals flow from these guiding principles? First, in the early years, as female employment has risen over the last decades, the demand for childcare has grown. But the problem is childcare is expensive and quality is patchy. Our solution should be affordable, high-quality, universal childcare, like they have in the Nordic countries, with children's centres and nurseries at the heart of every community. We propose 15 hours of free nursery care for two- to four-year-olds for 48 weeks a year, and more help with the affordability of childcare places, so that everybody is guaranteed affordable childcare from the moment their child turns one. This will cost over two and a half billion pounds, so to pay for it we suggest scrapping the marriage tax allowance, restricting tax-free pension lump sums to £36,000, and freezing child benefit for school-aged children in the next parliament. The vast majority of young people are smart, ambitious and socially engaged, but many are worried about their future. And the problem is that half a million young people are not in education, employment or training, and the school-to-work transition is broken for those who don't go down the academic track. Our solution is a youth allowance for 18 to 21 year olds, a guarantee of, of work after six months of unemployment and an expansion of apprenticeships and training. And on working age welfare, we see that the vast majority of people in Britain want to work but they realise that when people can't find work they need support. The problem is that 78% of the public think that the current system doesn't reward contribution. Benefits don't protect enough against the big risks of losing your income and home while contribution is not sufficiently recognised. Our solution is to create a new democratically governed national insurance fund for contributory benefits, separate from those that pay for social assistance. Those who've paid in more should receive £30 more JSA a week. There should be better support for mortgage interest payments to help people stay afloat, and we need better ways of getting people back into work, particularly run by local authorities. On housing, we see home ownership out of reach for growing numbers of people. Renting is too often costly and insecure, making it hard for families to put down roots and feel part of their communities. We don't build enough homes in Britain, and 95% of government spending on housing goes on housing benefit, with just 5% invested in bricks and mortar. The housing benefit bill will be over £25 billion within five years. The solution is to allow towns and cities to expand, to shake up the land market, and give local authorities more freedom to borrow and build, and over time shift the power over housing benefit to the local level. In crime and in social exclusion, people experience crime and antisocial behaviour feeling unsafe and undermining the social bonds upon which a strong society is built. Despite the fall in crime, there are still people saying one in ten of them, you know, adults say local authority areas of such as their own, have antisocial behaviour that's too high. Our solution is to extend restorative justice, which gives a voice to victims, establish neighbourhood justice panels involving local residents in facilitating restoration and punishment for low-harm offences, and to extend the successful Youth Justice Board and Youth Offending Teams to 18-20s to, to keep more people out of custody and rehabilitated in the community. For older people, Britain is now an ageing society in which we are living longer, healthier lives. Many older people use their time and experience to make an enormous contribution to society. But the problem is that social care services are underfunded and failing, 
and 1 in 10 people report that they often feel lonely. Our solution is the development of neighbourhood networks of community groups that support older people, as they've got successfully now in Leeds and elsewhere, more care coordinators, people who can put together care packages for people, and five-year integrated NHS and social care budgets. The winter fuel payment should be means-tested and the savings put into care services for those with moderate needs. Well, this presentation gives just some of the headlines from the Condition of Britain report, and so we urge you to read it in full. You can read it online, you can download it, or you can request a free copy being sent to you.